Hello everyone. Good morning. I hope you all are doing well. First, I would like to thank to Graduate Research Conference Committee and Department of Physics, WIU, for providing this platform for me. I am Pradeep Atrai, a graduate scholar of Western Illinois University, Macau. Today, I will give the presentation on simulation of quantum error correction for encoded single qubits. At WIU, I'm working in quantum error correction in IBM's platform called Twisky with my professor, Dr. Kishore Kapali, and with my colleagues, Al Malik. This is my final semester at WIU. I'm going to graduate on this May. Okay, for the today's presentation, I have made some outlines and they are classical versus quantum computer, application of the quantum computer, introduction, nine qubit quantum error correction circuit, measurement and results. Mainly, I'll focus on the quantum error correction, but before we reaching there, let us make some comfort with that. We already know classical computer deals with classical bit like zero and one. Over here we are, we can see classical bits only, can only be zero and one. Or we can say switch on and switch off. It's an example but quantum computer deals with quantum bits, like a, it deals with zero and one and superposition of both. In classical computer, we are doing cloning of the bits, but in quantum computing, we are not doing such a copy. In classical computing, if we get the, corrupted information, any of the, any one of the information in, is corrupted, then we can take the next copy of that, but which is not possible in quantum computing. But why we are doing the quantum computing, although it's very complicated, because we have this very important region, the application of quantum computing, which are artificial intelligence and machine learning, computational chemistry, drug design and development, cyber security and cryptography, logistic optimization, and weather forecasting, and finally financial modeling. But with all this, there is some redundancy in quantum computing with that complication, I'm motivated for quantum error correction queue. Because quantum computing and communication requires detection and correction of errors and to protect the information against unavoidable noise. And also this particularly difficult to maintain the qubit. Quantum state is they suffer from quantum decoherence and state fidelity. Okay, let's go for the introduction. A qubit state is a coherent superposition of the basis state. Thus, a single qubit can be described by the linear combination of K0 and K1, or we can say superposition of that. Psi K is equal to alpha 0 plus beta 1. We can say alpha K0 plus beta K1, where the alpha and beta are the probability amplitude, and the total probability will be 1. We can say modulus of alpha square plus modulus of beta square is equal to 
one. Okay. In quantum error correction, we use some fundamental universal gains, which are polyyak state. Okay, this is the polyyak state. We can uh, say the sigma x for the polyyak state, and then we can say the sigma j for the poly j gate, and then the superposition of these two becomes sigma y is a y gate. We have Hadamard gate to change the basis. We have control nut gate. Where the bit flip occur, then the one, if there is a one, k to one, that becomes zero. Or if there is k zero, that becomes one. It changes the zero to one, one to zero. But if the phase flip occur, then the zero does not change. Zero becomes zero. There is no change on zero, but there is change while there is k to one becomes minus k to one. There is sign, this sign change. We can see that one in the z gate over in the picture, sigma z gate over in the picture too. Okay. The, before entering this picture, the main goal of this research is on quantum compute computation, accessing IBM quantum computer. I want to test the error correction protocol on actual IBM hardware to look at how they perform. So we are building the circuit for error correction, error detection for the single qubit error in nine qubit logical circuit on QuizKit. Here is the detailed picture of the quantum error correction circuit. Over here, this is our input superposition state. Then after we did the encoding of that, we use, we use the nine qubit to encode the single qubit single input this a single qubit we encode this one then after we introduce the artificial error this is our artificial error because we didn't know where is the error has occurred that's why we use artificial error in each qubit and then after we do the error syndrome detection with the help of n means nine minus one that is eight ancilla to measure the error over here, then after with the help of the error syndrome detection, while we do the error syndrome here and then detect the major the error here, then we can make the error correction circuit. We can design the error correction circuit. Then after when we apply that circuit here, then after we do the decoding, we do the encoding at the first and then we do the decoding and then get the original state whatever we send at the beginning we get same thing at the last because we did the error correction we introduced the error and then we did the correction also that's why we get the same result at the last okay let's go separately from the encoder it's a nine qubit encoder circuit yes we know Encoding is the process of assembling the message. We can say information, ideas, thought into a representative design to ensure that the receiver can understand it. We can encode the zero physical to zero logical, one physical to one logical. We can encode the superposition using this code that is alpha zero logical plus beta one logical is equal to alpha zero 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 plus beta one one one. This is our encoded state. Over here, if we look at the picture, this first block, these two ancilla from Q zero to Q three and Q zero to Q six, where is this is the phase encoding part. And then second one is the bit encoding part.
Okay, let's go. After this, we will introduce the error over here in each qubit separately. One error at one error at one qubit at once. We do not repeat the uh, keep the two errors in the two qubit at uh, simultaneously, but we do the one error at Q1 after measurement. We do the second, we do third, like that. We do the error. Okay, this is the error syndrome detection part. This is our syndrome detection part on which the first six combination with this other market up from here to here with detecting phase, which is made to detection the phase flip error on the circuit. If the phase flip error occur, this part detect the that error. And then if there is phase flip, bit, sorry, feed flip occur, and then these two part measure the bit flip error. Because we don't know where the error has occurred. So we have we use the introduced, we used to introduce the artificial bit flip and then phase flip error on the each qubit. Because we don't know where is the error. And measure the, then after we measure the ancilla. Why we measure the ancilla? Because we use the synergate gate and encoder. So the error goes on ancilla. After a very careful measurement of the ancilla, we generate the operation based on the ancilla as a control. And then apply them to the whole circuit and develop the automated error correction circuit. After this code, this is our measurement of the ancilla. Well, we introduce the error in each qubit for the bit flip error and then phase flip error. With this error, we generate the operation needed in the logical space. This is our the operation needed in logical space. And then uh, this is our operation need on the ancilla as a control. With this code, our error will be corrected. With all this operation while we implement on the code, then our circuit easily correct all the error. Okay, this is the schematic of the error correction circuit in QuizKit for the phase flip, bit flip, and then superposition of that means Z error too. At last, we use the decoder after this circuit and they get the exact same output as we send the input. Whatever we send the input, we will get the exact output. After all this process of encoding, error implementation, error detection, and correction, after that decoding, we now use them to measure the qubit where we send the information. After simulation of the nine qubit error correction code in QuizKit, we found the expected result. Still, now we are waiting for <coughs> waiting for the axis of the IBM hardware to run our nine qubit code. This is our measurement and results. This is our qubit measurement. And this is the, <coughs> sorry, simulation of the nine qubit error correction code in QuizKit, which is IBM platform. And the result shows that there is no error. We use the eight ancilla that is, I already mentioned nine minus one ancilla are used which help to remove the unavoidable noise with the help of parity between qubits of nine qubit encoded circuit in 
IBM's platform. We use Toffoli gate also here to remove the error. Okay. So to give the flavor of all the process, I generated three qubit. Let me remove my face from here. For file. I generated three qubit error correction code and simulated this one in QuizKit. First of all, I simulate these things in QuizKit. This is our QuizKit result, which is 100%. We get the 100% result here. But while we implement these things in actual hardware, we get the 76% result. That means there may error on the actual hardware or maybe there is some error in our circuit. So what we have done is to use the simulator and which is working fine. The next step is to test this code to actual IBM hardware for the nine qubit because we have access only for the up to seven, but that means three qubit only. We can do the simulation we can run this code only up to three qubits. That's why we cannot able to do the nine qubit code over here. We will use an IBM quantum simulator to test this protocol and know and quantify how good they are. Do they perform better than others? This is our question and we found yes. Okay, thank you this much for today. If you have any question, please feel free to upload the question. Thank you.